week when we were talking about Maddie, how this last week it wasn't the Super Bowl, it wasn't the be all end all. Do you have to relay that message at all to, to the team this week that, yeah, you guys just swept the Gophers, but that there's still a long way and a lot, a lot of work to do? Yeah, that's basically what we talked about on Monday was great weekend and now it's on to Bemidji. Um, remember how we got to where we swept the Gophers and that was a lot of hard work and focus at practice. So that's kind of been our message. How do you keep the team, you know, as high and as pumped up they were for the Gophers, or, or, or is that just not possible? <laughs> no, I think it is. I think it is because now that gives them the taste of what more can come if they continue to play that way. Now we've beaten, you know, uh, the best two teams in the country, and I think they believe that they can beat anyone, which gives them hope that we can get to that national championship and make make some exciting things happen around here. Do you sense at all that they're they're still excited from from that sweep and that that maybe they're able to ride that into this series against Bemidji, who, who hasn't always you know been the easiest uh, draw for the Bulldogs? Right. No, Bemidji's a tough team and they uh, can take down some top teams. They've been known to do that, so it's not the type of weekend that you can just roll in uh, resting on your laurels from last weekend. But um, I think we we certainly are confident and we had a lot of fun. It's fun to win. It's fun to beat the Gophers, and uh, we want to continue to do that. Where's that confidence level at for this team? Is it even higher than, than what you kind of sensed on uh, after Saturday's win? I think so. I think it's um, not too high though. We talk about that as well. It's uh, at a really good spot where again they believe that they can do it, they know they can do it, and um, they're on a mission. But Minji, Looking back at the first time you played them, what were the challenges they really gave you? What are the areas that you need to sure up? Um, you know, they, they always are a juggernaut in front of the net. So getting pucks through, understanding that they're going to block shots, they're going to clutch and grab and do whatever they need to do to protect their slot area um, and being tough both physically and mentally to get through it because it's different. It's not going to be quite as fast and open up in the, the passing lanes that we're able to find against say the Gophers might not be there against Bemidji so it's sticking with it and continuing to grind. It's just a different style of play. Is that an adjustment going from a, a wide open up and down game like we saw this weekend against the Gophers to uh, uh, maybe a slower pace against Bemidji? It is, and we obviously want to maintain our speed and continue to put pressure on them. We feel like we can do a good job with the speed, but it doesn't end just, just at that point because, like I said, they're so defensively focused that they'll have five people back. So the seams won't necessarily be there because they weren't quite as deep maybe at the other end. So it's just a, it is a different style. There are ways to break it down, and that's what we're working on this week. How do you feel the energy and intensity has been in practice this week after the two big wins? It's been great. It's been great. Um, we we do skills or days off on Tuesdays, so Monday was our team practice, and this will be our second one today. So Monday was great. Like I said, we talked about um, focusing on the hard work that goes into it and what got us those two wins, and that's that's practice. So that that'll be our message again today, and they responded great on Monday, and I'd expect the same today. For the European players that came back, how did you feel like they uh, meshed and were able to be integrated? Was it uh, pretty seamless or was it uh, you know, anything different? It was great. Um, it's always nice to get the whole complement of the roster back. And I think, you know, sometimes when people are away, they come back, it gives you that shot in the arm. And certainly Stalder was quite good this weekend. And all of them actually played critical parts. You know, Michelle Lovenhelm was the one that drew that, that penalty shot in the end, which kind of iced the game for us. And uh, Lind and Hadeen and, and Rizova, they all played great. So um, they were welcome back. Yeah. Who was the one that knew the rule that you could uh, take the power play and that that was the uh, smarter play there? You know, that was a staff decision, staff decision um, with some help from uh, the refs. Just, you know, you can take a minor or, or the penalty shot. It's up to you. So we opted for the, the minor due to clock management and just the flow of the game. Did you, did you know that was a rule? Um, at the time, no. Obviously, the win on Friday was the first step, but getting the back-to-back -back wins against a program like that, uh, do you feel like Saturday was, was even like, the, the, maybe the biggest step that you've taken as a program to get a sweep of that team? Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, I think that one will go down in the memory banks of all of these players, especially the seniors. Um, and, and hopefully we have more yet to come, but right now that's definitely the... Uh, 
the top the top weekend. Katie McGovern with a couple goals. Uh, what does she continue to do uh, in her senior season uh, that, that keeps letting you put her in, in the positions that she was in this weekend? Yeah, she's very consistent. Like you say, you know what what is she doing? She's always doing it. Whether it's uh, blocking shots defensively, um, coming out of the zone with a puck on breakouts up the middle of the ice, finding stalled or a brick as well as putting the puck in the net uh, pretty consistently at the other end and she loves it. I mean her celebrations tell you everything about her passion for the game and how she's feeling and uh, it's hard not to rally behind a player like that. Even last year you felt like she was maybe more of a role player than, than a top line player. Did you have a conversation with her over the offseason about needing to, to take another step and, and be the player she has been this year? Yeah, I mean, I think she had a great junior year uh, considering the playing minutes prior to. I thought she was a huge asset to the team. And it was just that goal scoring touch that needed some time to develop. And that's been the biggest difference because I think everything else that she's doing is pretty much on point with what she was doing last year. It's just that she's able to convert. So a lot of goals and that makes her pretty pretty valuable. There's Stalder and there's Bricklick and there's Rooney, but could you argue that she's maybe one of the more valuable pieces, uh, just allowing the way that her versatility, uh, allowing her to play second line, third line, first line? And, and allowing you to move other pieces around? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, any two-way player like that who can play the middle, center is a very difficult position, right? You have to be very responsible. You have to know all the face-off plays. You have to know what you're doing in the D zone. And then to be so uh, prolific in the O zone, that, that's a real talent. And so, yes, she is very special, and uh, we are very happy with the season she's having. What did you think of Jess Healy? I, I thought Friday she was especially good, and we talk about Sid all the time, but it's, and we almost forget about Jess and, and the minutes that she gives you. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the D we don't we don't talk about, and uh, they're they're phenomenal. But Heels plays like she's six feet tall. She's uh, tough, um, physical, and has an engine that doesn't quit. She's playing just about every other shift um, on the back end against a really fast Gophers team, and doing a lot of great things out there. So we're very happy with her as well.